Hey guys, Ed here with the latest installment of our Johnny 5 robot build. Last time you saw us make these track tension assemblies, as well as the chain drive mechanisms. We'll loop back to some small details later. So today we'll be finishing up these rings that attach to the track drives and interface with that tube, as well as making the entire tiptoe tube that links the two track drives and works with the track tip mechanism to tilt the robot up onto his tiptoes when he needs some extra height. Card here at the Johnny Fives page on the NYC CNC site where you can find all of the previous installments as well as some CAD files and any related information. Let's get started. First up, backtracking to where we left off in the last installment with those large rings we slotted out on the 1100M Plus. Over to the manual lathe to clean up and chamfer the backsides of those using two layers of the green powder coat masking tape from McMaster to help keep those chuck jaws from marring the part. And here you see a perfect use of the lathe chuck spacer we made in a recent widget. Card here to that video. Next up, we needed to drill these six holes around the outside edge of the part. Using a small three jaw chuck in a 5C hex block with a vice stop is good for those of you who don't have a fourth or don't want to set it up for a small job like this where it's really not super critical and you're only doing one or two parts. And you can either tap in the machine or leave it in the stop and take it over and tap it at your flex arm. clean up the backside of those holes, I use this little Noga flip out backside chamfer tool. It having two cutting edges instead of three or four or whatever allowed the tool to ride with the contour of that inner diameter and make a nice even chamfer following the contour of the hole. Next, tiptoe tube. Starting off on the manual lathe, at this point I'm not super worried about the steady rest marring the surface. We'll be taking this later on and skimming the ODs in this area to fit bearings. So right now, really just worried about cleaning up the ends, bringing it to length, and using this form tool on the ID to round this edge. There is a chance that the wiring harness will rub against this, so we want to make sure that the edge is broken. A height gauge on a surface plate can be a good way to accurately mark your part length on lathe parts like this, but sometimes the height gauge isn't high enough. So here I'm just using a couple of 246 blocks as a riser and making sure to compensate for that extra six inches. Finished cleaning up, chamfering, and rounding the other side. And then I pressed in these Delrin bungs to use as centers for cleaning up the OD here on the lathe, as well as over on the fourth axis. I didn't have enough reach with the Heimer to touch the sides of this tube, so I butted a couple of 246 blocks up against my part and then probed off the outside faces of those to give me my part center line. Okay. 
card here to Johnny Five's page on the NYC CNC site where you can download an F3D file and check out these speeds and feeds and toolpaths in more detail. This first index position has a few unique features, so I decided to keep it separate from the other five just to keep things a bit more manageable for me in CAM. This large hole is for the wiring harness to the track drives to pass through, so again we'll want this corner to be eased. I'm using a ball end mill and a scallop toolpath to round that edge. And while we're at it, using the same tool to do some 3D scallop chamfers on these holes and slots. Now onto the real fourth axis work. You'll notice the tool goes to G30. This is a problem I mentioned in the track tensioner video and we have a customized post on Johnny Five's page at the NYC CNC site that seems to have fixed this problem. I couldn't see it in person, but here on video, I can see the part of the tailstock end moving a little bit. I think my tailstock wasn't snug enough. Luckily, what I'm doing here, a little bit of movement in the Z, not the end of the world, but that's something you do need to keep an eye on. Back over to the manual lathe for another quick sand on the OD to clean up any burrs. And for the ID, using this sweet trick I picked up from another YouTuber, Edge Precision, card here to his channel, which is sort of a custom made extended length flap wheel. All you have to do is take a piece of round bar, half inch or so, hacksaw a slot in the end of it, and you can use that to pinch your sandpaper or scotch bright or whatever, and put that in a drill to clean up deep bores. That's all for now. Next time, we'll be moving on to his rear caster wheel assembly, which also needs to articulate with the tiptoe motion. Hope you enjoyed, we'll see you next time.